Mr. Goodlatte, there seem to me to be two principles here. One is I feel very strongly uh, about the Fourth Amendment's protections, and it seems to me to be crystal clear we have a right to be secure in our papers, those things that we either write down or, or say privately. And in my view, that would include metadata about uh, those, those records. And I'd even go a step farther and say whether your papers or effects are stored at your home or are entrusted to some third party for storage, they're still private and they would require a, a warrant to search them under the fourth. Um, however, a person can waive these rights in a contractual agreement with another party if they wish to. Um, if a person agrees to terms of service that allow disclosure of aspects of their private papers, it seems to me they have that freedom. Uh, if, if they don't like the privacy provisions that a company offers, um, uh, they, they don't have to agree to it. They, they can choose a competitor or, or do without. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when we did it without all of this digital technology. I don't for the life of me remember how we did without it, but we, we seem to do so very nicely. So my, my, my point is, why should we interfere with the right of two parties to agree to terms of service? What's wrong with that? Well, that's a separate issue from the, the, the core issue in the Fourth Amendment's Not For Sale Act. <clears throat> I do think that uh, it would be good for the Congress to look at that underlying issue that you refer to, considering the fact that I'm, I'm not the most prolific user of the internet, but I counted yesterday on my phone, I have 160 apps. Uh, most of those apps are gathering information about me and storing it, I don't... Yeah, well, and, and by the way, I, I would assume a lot of those apps sell that information that's how they make the money right. to, to pay for the app and to provide you with, with that service. Correct. Um, so if they can't sell that information, Correct. But the, wouldn't they have to charge me for the service they're now providing me for free? And, and how does that help me as a consumer? That, well, first of all, I think that the important thing there is that the consumer understands and has that choice. Right. Uh, that's a different issue than well, that's what's what, that's before what us today. That's what needs to be a grown-up. You have to read, read it and, and stand by your agreements. Right. The Fourth Amendment does not apply to that transaction. The Fourth Amendment applies because when I've, the I've government wants waived, to buy. I've, I have waived my right under the terms of privacy that I've agreed to in exchange for the service they're providing me. Correct. But did you waive your Fourth Amendment right to not have the government, which would otherwise be required to have a warrant or a subpoena or some other court order, to get that information, well, I've, just I've, because you had a transaction with a company that got your information. I've, I've told the other party in that contract, it's okay for you to sell certain information. You're bound by the terms of that contract, you can't sell information beyond that. But I've agreed to allow you to do that in exchange for the service that you're providing me. I think that why, would... I why think would we interfere with that? I, I think you're interfering with it because the government has powers that other entities that might buy that information do not have. Which is why we have a constitution to restrain it. But that constitution guarantees me not only my Fourth Amendment privileges against the government to come snooping into my affairs, but it also gives me the freedom to enter into contracts with others for our, 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 that, that we find mutually beneficial. And I may find it mutually beneficial to get this free service in exchange or selling certain of that data. That's an informed consent that, 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 that I have a right to. Right, but the, but the sale of the information to the government puts the government in the picture as well, and the Fourth Amendment is directed at the government, not obtaining information without showing probable cause, without providing a warrant. Let me ask you one other question on, on location, location data. It, it doesn't seem to me that that falls within the, the papers and effects definition. If someone observes your movements in public, that isn't a search or seizure. I observe you right here before me. Whether I make that observation once or a hundred times a day, doesn't really matter. How does location data fall within the Fourth Amendment? Well, I'd have to go back to look at the Carpenter decision to, to interpret exactly how the court did that, but the court has, has held that, uh, and, and courts have held that under certain circumstances that information is protected. So Maybe will the gentleman yield for a question or a point? Because it, I think you make a good point that maybe it's not unconstitutional, maybe it doesn't violate the Fourth Amendment for the government to go uh, to one of the big companies and say we're going to purchase this data. 
But the question for us is the policy question. As citizens, do we want our government engaged in the business of I purchasing? understand that, but the flip side of that is do we want our government interfering with our right to contract with providers for services that we may find appealing under the terms of that agreement? If they're providing, again, the alternative is if they're making money right now selling this data that I've told them they can sell, um, if they're not allowed to do that anymore because we've stepped in, they're going to have to charge they can still, me. Well, they're going they to have to charge me as it. a consumer for that, for, for that service, and I'm not sure that's in my interest as a consumer. They can, 